Kakuna Ratata. What a wonderful team. Kakuna Ratata. No, it's not a dream. After all these years, I have decided to come back to one of the very first challenges I did on my channel. Many, many years ago, when I had only a few thousand subscribers, I wanted to experiment with challenge videos, but wasn't quite sure what the format would be or how to even do them. So I decided it would be funny to take a meme I'd heard on the internet and turn that into a Pokemon team. To be quite honest, I didn't really enjoy the series, I don't think the videos are very good, and so I put the project away and started to work on different things. But now, it's a few years later, and I have the mod that turns Fire Red and Leaf Green into all double battles. And as soon as I got that mod, it got me thinking, I wonder if I could do a legit Kakuna Rattata run. Not a run where I sometimes used Kakuna and sometimes used Rattata. No, this run, I would be able to use both at the same time. Other than the trainer battles being double battles, the rules are going to be pretty much the same as they've always been. However, since in my previous run I caught a Weedle and evolved it into a Kakuna, I decided to do that for this run as well. And I can already tell this video is going to be a long one, so let's fast forward ahead to Brock. I tried first with Rattata at level 13 and Kakuna at level 10. At this level, Rattata learns Hyper Fang, which is a fairly powerful attack, and Kakuna gets Poison Sting. Unlike in Generation 1, Brock doesn't have any full heals. So the strategy is simple. Use Rattata's Hyper Fang to deal damage and hopefully flinch Geodude, and use Poison Sting to try and quickly get poisons on both Geodude and Onyx, and then use Harden to try and absorb their attacks, hopefully giving Rattata enough time to knock them out. Unfortunately, Hyper Fang does have a 10% chance to miss, but it also has a chance to flinch. And thankfully, we are able to knock out Geodude with both Kakuna and Rattata still around. Unfortunately, Onyx does no Rock Tomb, it knocks out Kakuna, Rattata does some decent damage, but Onyx hits with Tackle and knocks out Rattata. So close, but not quite good enough. I battled Brock about 10 more times unsuccessfully until I realized I was making a really silly mistake. Unlike Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, Roxanne, only Onyx knows Rock Tomb. Geodude just knows Tackle and Defense Girl, just like in Red and Blue. So in fact, I should be focusing all my energy on Onyx, not Geodude. Rock Tomb is the most dangerous move, so I want to get it off the board as quick as possible. Unlike in Red and Blue, it doesn't know Bide, but rather Bind, which it does know in Yellow, and instead of Screech, it gets Harden. In this battle, Onyx faints rather quickly due to an early Poison Sting by Kakuna. Unfortunately, I can't seem to poison Geodude, but Tackle isn't nearly as much of a threat. It is annoying that Geodude has used Defense Curl a thousand times, so Hyper Fang wasn't dealing very much damage, but now that Kakuna has used Harden, Geodude isn't doing very much damage to it, and it only attacks 50% of the time. By this point, it's very clear I'm going to win, a flinch helps even further, and it's just not possible Geodude's going to do enough damage. One Pokemon is all I need remaining in order to win, but in the end, both Pokemon were able to make it, and an underleveled Rattata and Kakuna were able to get by Brock. Far easier than what we've seen in Red and Blue, and even maybe a sign of good things to come for the rest of the run. But after we defeat Brock, we have to head to Cerulean City, and either battle Rival 2 or Misty. I decide to battle Rival 2 because he's actually going to be very easy. You see, the Rival's second Pokemon he sends out is Abra, which only knows Teleport, essentially turning this battle into a 2-on-1. So I can Poison Sting and try to Hyper Fang Pidgeotto, and even if I miss, it's not the biggest deal. I do have one Pokemon to spare. Getting hit with Sand Attack's kind of annoying, but the whole battle is going to be a 2-on-1. For Charmander, I really want to hit with Hyper Fang. It goes first and hits with Growl, which is annoying. I do miss with both my moves, which sucks, but I'm still fairly confident I can win. Kakuna gets knocked out with Ember. Rattata gets burned, but it has the Guts ability. This ability not only ignores burn damage, but ups its attack by 50%. Unfortunately, I miss with another Hyper Fang, so I do need to try again, but I don't think this is going to take too many attempts. 
In this attempt, Rattata hits with Hyper Fang and Pidgeotto goes for Sand Attack against Kakuna. I don't mind if Kakuna doesn't attack, so that's fine. Turn 2, I hit with Hyper Fang, but I am hit with Sand Attack on Rattata. Not great, but I can still win. I make a small mistake here, I should have gone for Quick Attack. Instead, I go for Hyper Fang, that could have missed, but I do knock out Pidgeotto, that's one down. Rattata gets hit by Poison Sting as it comes out. I go for Quick Attack, which I thought would knock out Rattata. It doesn't, and even Poison Sting isn't able to knock it out. I have to go for Quick Attack again, but I do knock it out. Charmander comes out, is immediately hit by Poison Sting. I go for Hyper Fang, but unfortunately Charmander goes first and hits with Ember. Rattata barely has any HP left, and it misses with Quick Attack. That sucks, and Charmander is able to knock out Kakuna with just one Ember. The only problem for Rival 2, Quick Attack hits, and now the battle is over. Unless I miss like 15 times, Abra does not have a way to attack me. It's going to be a 1 KO, and while it's unfortunate Kakuna doesn't get any experience points, Rattata is able to secure the victory against Rival 2. I decide to battle Nugget Bridge before I try Misty for the first time. Of course, she's going to send out Starmie and Star You. Starmie outspeeds, goes for Water Pulse, and nearly knocks out Rattata. I use Hyper Fang, and it does about a third to Starmie. Star You raises its defense, and Poison Sting does not poison the Star You. Starmie then goes for Swift, which hits both my Pokemon, and does enough damage to knock out Rattata. I think we've seen enough to know this isn't working. And to make matters worse, unlike with Brock, Star Yu also knows Water Pulse and knocks out Kakuna. Or should I say it almost knocks out Kakuna, but it does confuse it, and I'm knocked out by Rapid Spin. I think one of the first time that move has ever knocked me out. Listen, you had to figure this run was going to get pretty difficult using Kakuna and Rattata. So we're going to head to the SSN. There are plenty of trainers to battle, and while it will take more time, this is not a run I'm trying to go particularly fast. Unfortunately, in Fire Red Leaf Green, the TM for Body Slam doesn't exist. You get an even more useful TM, Brick Break, if one of my Pokemon could use it. I guess it's a good time as any to talk about Rattata's moveset. Overall, it's okay. Hyper Fang would be pretty good if only it didn't have that chance to miss. And Secret Power can paralyze Confuse depending on the location it's used in, but you sacrifice a little bit of power. Return is going to be what I end up using, but it's going to take a little bit of time until I can get that TM. And while Fire Red and Leaf Green does have move tutors to make up for the TMs that no longer exist in these games, some of those move tutors are located way, way late in the game. Body Slam isn't available until the post game, and Double Edge isn't available until the very last room of Victory Road. All of this is to say, Rattata's moveset might be even worse than it was in Red and Blue, at least in some ways. And as for Kakuna, it knows Poison Sting because I evolved it from Weedle, String Shot for the same reason, and Harden. That's it. Not a ton of move diversity. Anyway, after battling a whole bunch of trainers, I decide to go battle Rival 3. He sends out Pidgeotto and Raticate. I go for Hyper Fang, it doesn't quite one-shot Pidgeotto and then get hit by both Hyper Fang and Sand Attack. Looks like the battle is over. I see if Secret Power is going to one-shot Raticate, but it doesn't. Hyper Fang will, though. I'm able to knock out Pidgeotto with Poison Sting. Then comes out Kadabra, which I'm able to outspeed and knock out with Secret Power. Not bad. Unfortunately, Poison Sting doesn't quite deal enough to knock out Raticate. And now it's a two-on-one. Raticate goes for Hyper Fang after Charmeleon knocks out Kakuna. And I'm going to have to try this again. As it would turn out, Rival 3 is actually pretty tough. So I needed to battle trainers on Route 11 and level up just a little bit more. This time I go for Hyper Fang against Pidgeotto, but I don't knock it out. It does hit with Sand Attack, but Poison Sting is able to poison Pidgeotto and nearly knock it out, but not quite. I am able to knock out Raticate with Hyper Fang as we talked about earlier. Pidgeotto goes for Gust. It does pretty decent damage against Kakuna. I use Poison Sting against Kadabra because it doesn't matter. Poison is going to knock out Pidgeotto, and thus there are only two Pokemon remaining for Rival 3. I'm going to knock out Kadabra first, use Secret Power, now it's a 2 on 1. Charmeleon goes for Ember, it doesn't do too too much. Hyper Fang then hits the next turn. Charmeleon is able to knock out Kakuna, but I easily will misclick, and then miss, and then a crit. 
Wow, that, that was awesome. It took me another five attempts to finally beat the rival. And I don't need to really describe it because you've already basically seen. I'm going to use the same exact strategy. One of the big problems was Pidgeotto using Sand Attack against Rattata. Can't really have that. And then making sure I don't miss too much with Hyper Fang. This time I just knock out Pidgeotto with Poison Sting. Not that it really mattered. It still ends up being Charmeleon and Kadabra versus Kakuna Rattata. I use Secret Power. Charmeleon goes for Ember and knocks out Kakuna. And now I just have to not miss. Hyper Fang does decent damage. I go for Secret Power. And look at that. Not misclicking. I win. Once again, Kakuna gets knocked out. But before you go around saying that Rattata is carrying the run and Kakuna is not really doing anything, Kakuna actually is doing something important. It is soaking up a ton of damage and allowing Rattata, which does not have very good HP or defensive stats, to survive long enough to knock out the other Pokemon. This really is a team effort. Kakuna needs to absorb as much damage as possible, which is why Harden is actually useful, and Rattata has to be smart with the moves it uses, complementing Kakuna. Right now, the team is working relatively well, I'd say. Now that we've defeated Rival 3, I can go back and defeat Misty. The battle definitely isn't free because she uses Star You and also Star Me. All right, I won't rhyme the whole battle. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to knock out Star Me as quick as possible. Thankfully, it targets Kakuna, which is Kakuna's primary purpose, soak up damage. It attacks Rattata next, but it's a little too late. We've knocked it out. And although Star You knocks out Kakuna, Hyper Fang is, oh, it's not enough to knock out Starmie, but it's really close. We can use two secret powers and knock out Staryu. So while Kakuna sadly doesn't get experience points, it was integral for allowing me to win and get my very second badge. Now that we can use Cut Outside of Battle, we can battle Lieutenant Surge. He leads with his Voltorb and Pikachu. So what I do is I secret power Voltorb, doesn't quite knock it out, and that's unfortunate because I accidentally targeted Pikachu with Poison Sting. We do get the poison, but that's not great. So now what I do is, since Rattata is paralyzed, I try to have Kakuna poison Voltorb while Rattata attacks Pikachu, but unfortunately Pikachu heal. And Rattata is paralyzed, which is bad. Pikachu goes for double team, and Shockwave from Voltorb doesn't do too much, but Rattata is paralyzed again, so things are looking pretty bleak. It goes for Sonic Boom, and both my Pokemon are almost knocked out, but the poison will knock out Voltorb and bring out Raichu. Since we're paralyzed, if we do get a hit, I think we'll one-shot with Hyper Fang. Shockwave knocks out Kakuna, and we don't one-shot Raichu. I also deleted Quick Attack, which would have come in handy, but we would have lost anyway. That was okay, but I have a bit of a better idea. You see, if we can turn this into a two-on-one, that would be pretty great. So instead of having Rattata attack Voltorb, we have it knock out Pikachu in one hit, and now out comes Raichu. I use Poison Sting, so Secret Power would one-shot Voltorb, but I get greedy and I get a crit. So we knock out Raichu right away. That really wasn't the right play, but it worked. And now we're easily going to be able to knock out the Voltorb with Secret Power and a second try victory for Kakuna Rattata versus Lieutenant Surge. Definitely not bad, not bad at all. And normally I would say in a Kanto run that we're going to make our way to Celadon, but of course with a Kakuna and a Rattata, there is a trainer that many of you already know that is going to be extremely difficult for a team like this. He does get a name in this game. Our good old pal with a two Geodude and a Graveler, Hiker Dudley. So he leads with his two Geodude, and we don't have a special move. So what are we gonna do? Well, here's the thing. If Geodude goes for Magnitude, it'll do damage to us, but it'll also knock out the other Geodude. So as long as Kakuna can survive, we might be okay. We do try to knock out the Geodude, but unfortunately, Graveler just deals way too much damage and this is when I kind of get the idea that Kakuna's role should not be so much knocking things out than just spamming Harden and hoping, well, I mean, if we can survive with Poison Stings, that would be cool. But we're just so low on health, it's very unlikely. It goes for Rock Throw and knocks me out. But I think I see a strategy here. Unfortunately, as it would turn out, that wouldn't work. We just don't have enough HP. 
So instead, we're just going to hope for better magnitude luck. It still knocks out the other Geodude, but a magnitude 6 doesn't do as much to us. Now we're just going to try to knock out Graveler as quick as possible, because his magnitudes do just way too much damage, is what I found. Poison Sting will help, and Hyper Fangs get flinches. Also, if Geodude uses magnitude, it too can knock out the Graveler. And now, we just need to get as much damage on this Geodude before Rattata faints. Hyper Fang is being used because we do want that flinch, and the worst thing is Rock Throw against Kakuna. But it looks like we're going to be fine. It does knock out Rattata, but with just a sliver of HP left, Kakuna is able to knock out the final Geodude, and we make it past Hiker Dudley. Pretty difficult battle, but thankfully, after this point in the game, we start getting access to better moves, and thus, shouldn't have as much trouble with Rock Pokemon. It'll still be a big problem. Now, I'm going to surprise you all and battle Erika next, because Kakuna defensively matches up well. You might also notice while we are overleveled, we're not overleveled by a crazy degree. Now, the first turn, here's what goes down. Victory Bell uses Stun Spore against Kakuna, and this is good because Kakuna has the Shed Skin ability, which can allow it to just get rid of statuses. Because of that, we do enough damage and Tangela is kind of useless to knock out Victory Bell right away. We're going to try to knock out Vileplume, and thankfully Rattata gets poisoned, so we deal a ton of damage, which is helpful because Erika's Pokemon know Giga Train. We're able to knock out Vileplume, and now it's Kakuna against Tangela. It uses Ingrain, so it's going to be gaining HP back as if it had leftovers, but that's only 1 16th. Poison will do 1 8th. Unfortunately, Erica has her own version of Shed Skin, a full heal, but Poison Sting is still doing enough damage, and as it would turn out, Kakuna did match up well. Erica, yeah, you can try to use a potion, you can use Ingrain, you can waste my time, but Giga Drain only has 5 power points, unlike in Generation 1, Pokemon actually have power points, and eventually, Kakuna is going to win. After I defeat Erika, I buy Ice Beam from the game corner and go to battle Giovanni. Alright, well, obviously we lead with Kakuna Rattata, and we have Rhyhorn and Onix. So what do I do? I Ice Beam the Rhyhorn, but it's not enough to knock it out. I also forgot to heal, which isn't a good thing. Thankfully, Onix I think has worse special defense, and Ice Beam, oh no, it doesn't knock it out. It does even less. Okay, well, we'll knock it out now, and if we poison Rhyhorn, we just did, we'll knock out both. So it could be a two-on-one against Kangaskhan. Tail Whip is fine, even though it hits both Pokemon. Oh no. Well, it's going to get knocked out on its own this turn. Another Tail Whip is bad, and Hyper Fang misses. But at the end of the day, we haven't been attacked yet. When we do, it's going to be bad. Kangaskhan goes for Bite, which in this generation is a special move, but we do barely anything. Thankfully, Kangaskhan goes for Bite again, and we're able to poison it. Kangaskhan finally goes for Mega Punch, which can miss, it does miss, and so both Kakuna and Rattata get experience points, and we've beaten Giovanni 1 fairly easily. Now the only thing left to do in this part of the game is to battle Rival 4. Typically in solo runs, this is one of the easiest rival fights, but this isn't red and blue, and this isn't a solo run. I decide to Ice Beam Pidgeotto, and just in case I don't knock it out, go for Poison Sting, we get two out speeds, and we knock it out. Now, Super Fang might seem useful, but it deals just half of the opponent's HP, which we need to knock them out in one hit. Execute, by the way, puts Kakuna to sleep, which is the best possible thing it could have done, because we don't really need Kakuna to do all that much. Rattata is able to one-shot Kadabra, and this brings out Charmeleon. Execute, though, sets up Reflect, so I'm going to go for Ice Beam against Execute, knocking it out and bringing out the rival's second-last Pokemon, Gyarados. Gyarados sucks. It uses Intimidate, and both my Pokemon have their attack cut by two-thirds. Kakuna wakes up due to Shed Skin, and Surge does give me Shockwave, which will make up for the accuracy I've lost, and is super effective against Gyarados. Double super effective. It takes two to knock it out, and thankfully Charmeleon has yet to have hit Kakuna with Ember. It's hit Rattata, and it's Poison. Reflect wears off, and although Charmeleon does actually knock out Rattata, 
it doesn't knock out Kakuna. And so, shockingly, it is Kakuna getting the victory versus Charizard and a first try victory versus Rival 4. All right, with zero expectations of this being a good battle, I'm going to battle Koga. You can see by this point, I'm actually under leveled, but I do have Dig. And although it's only 60 base power, it is super effective against Muck, and look at all that damage it did. Of course, coughing is self-destruct, which doesn't knock out Muck, but does knock out Rattata, and yeah, that's gonna be great. So, we need to try something else right now. I pretty much never go to the roots east of Fuchsia, but we need a lot more levels. So, time to battle a ton of trainers. Don't forget, there's a bunch more in Sylph Company, and there's the Fighting Dojo. So, eventually, we'll beat Koga. It just might take a while. Well, since I was in Sylph Company leveling up, I thought I would at least try to battle Rival Fievel. You can see, we're quite a bit higher. We're at level 44 for Rattata, 43 for Kakuna, and thus, we're able to outspeed Pidgeot. And we are going to knock it out with two returns. Return being a base 102 power move if you have max friendship. The problem is the next Pokemon that comes out is Gyarados, and just like last time, it's gonna lower my attack. I still do have Shockwave, but even with the critical hit, it's not enough to knock it out. Thankfully, Execute has been trying in vain to go for Stun Spore, so that's two Pokemon down, and Execute is poisoned. But finally it attacks, it goes for Confusion, and it knocks out Rattata. I'm not going to reset and just keep the experience points because they are hard to get, but we have a long way to go before we're going to be able to battle Rival Fievel. I believe I've battled every single trainer I can. Yes, you can re-battle them, but at this point, I'm at level 46 with both of my Pokemon. Now that we have a max power return, it actually does more to Muck than Dig, and... It raises its evasion, Coughing doesn't go for self-destruct, and Sludge does nothing to Kakuna. We're able to knock out Muck, and now we have two Coughing. So, what I'd like to do is knock out one as soon as possible, and as it turns out, Return does knock out the Coughing on the right. This brings up Weezing. Coughing attacks my Rattata, but I would learn that in fact, it was only because of Kakuna's Poison Stings, I was able to knock out the right word coughing the one on the left survives on one hp or so koga is able to heal and that ends the battle because rattata gets knocked out and while there's not much wheezing could do well actually i wonder if wheezing went for self-destruct if we would win i don't think it can though i think it's programmed only to go for self-destruct if it could knock me out but that would be kind of interesting they seem to only be going for sludge because if Weezing went for self-destruct, what might happen is it would knock out itself, it would knock out the coughing, but with six hardens, it might not knock out Kakuna. I am trying in vain, hoping that will happen, but it just doesn't look likely. Perhaps the AI will never use self-destruct if it's its last Pokemon. I'm not really sure, but we need to try again. Unfortunately, while I would get close, it just became very difficult to knock out the Weezing. We do need all of Koga's Pokemon to attack Kakuna, and so we're going to use Harden, but then we're going to use Poison Sting. Hopefully, uh-oh, Rattata's badly poisoned, but this actually is a bit of a double-edged sword. Our attack is 50% higher, but we don't have much time left before we're knocked out. We can turn this into a two-on-one, but I wanted to see if I would knock out Weezing. This was the first time I was poisoned. And the answer is we come really close. Close enough that we will knock out Weezing on the very next turn. But is the battle not over? I mean, maybe not. We're going to need to fast forward this. But even though Coughing is using a ton of smoke screens, I think we will out tank this Coughing Sludge. Maybe. I don't know. I, I, I can't tell. I mean, you know, the hope is it just goes for self-destruct at some point, but I don't think it's going to. Still, it's not like I have anything better to do. I'm just going to keep attacking, hoping that it goes for self-destruct. Now, I also think maybe once it runs out of sludge, it's only attacking move is self-destruct. 
Now, this is speeding on by. I can't tell how many... Yes! Yes! Go, Kakuna! Everyone complained when I first did this years ago that Rattata did everything. Looks like Kakuna is an integral part of Kakuna Rattata, and it is the sole reason we beat Koga and have our fifth gym badge. And now, I'm about to get one of the best items in the game, Leftovers. Right where the Snorlax was on routes 12 and 16, if you use the item finder there, and only if you use the item finder there, you get leftovers. And with that, maybe, maybe, we're going to be able to beat Rival Fievel. So, like last time, he leads off with Pidgeot and Execute. We lead with Kakuna Rattata. Our moveset looks a little bit different. This time we have Thunderbolt. I was just curious how much it would do. And Pidgeot went for Feather Dance. Execute, however, paralyzes Rattata, and this is kind of good because Return's going to do a lot more damage. We can knock out Pidgeot, and next came out Alakazam. Now, it went for Future Sight, which is pretty good, so long as we attack... Ah, we don't. So, I'm just going to reset. We probably would have one-shot Alakazam. Being paralyzed is pretty bad. It's much better to be burned or poisoned, but yeah, let's just try this again. Okay. So, I'm going to go for Return this time, and it does just a little bit more than Thunderbolt. But this time, Pidgeot goes for Feather Dance against Rattata. This is why I have Ice Beam and Thunderbolt, just in case this happens. Also, so I can do more damage against the Gyarados. So now both my Pokemon are paralyzed, although Kakuna gets rid of its paralysis due to Shed Skin. This time, even with the Feather Dance, Return one-shots Alakazam, and now... Gyarados and Execute have to face off against Kakuna Rattata. We have Thunderbolt. We are at a higher level. Execute will faint this turn due to poison. But unfortunately, even with the attack by both Kakuna and Rattata, Gyarados, while poisoned, still has a little bit of health left. Probably two turns left. And that's not good. Because Charizard can use Flamethrower and just one-shot Rattata. We can knock out Gyarados due to poison. And that's good for Kakuna. And it even survives the future site, but we might need a bit of a better strategy here because if Charizard can just come out and one-shot Rattata, that's not good. Well, I tried to battle rival Fievel five more times, felt fitting. And although I could get to Charizard pretty consistently, I wasn't coming close to knocking it out. What you saw was probably one of my best attempts. I realized I actually forgot a couple of the trainers on Route 13, so I can battle them now, and that's pretty good. But we're probably going to have to level up a lot if we're going to stand up to that Charizard. Both my Pokemon are now over level 50. So hopefully this works, but I don't know. Return doesn't one-shot execute, but after Poison Sting, it's knocked out. Pidgeot goes for Feather Dance, which is bad, but it doesn't do a lot of damage. So I'm going to keep Pidgeot around and knock out Alakazam. This brings out Gyarados. I use Poison Sting to try and poison the Pidgeot. Unfortunately, it Feather Dances my Rattata, which isn't good, but I get a Clutch Poison on the Gyarados, meaning it'll get knocked out next turn, and we can focus our energies on the Pidgeot. Now, again, in these double battles, you want to make everything a two-on-one as quick as possible. If it's a two-on-one, I mean, we have two, they have one. It's an advantage. It's the only advantage we can get. Unfortunately, when the one is Charizard and it knows Flamethrower, it's not a big advantage because it only takes two turns to knock out my Pokemon. Still, there doesn't seem to be any real progress here. We're making it to Charizard, sure, easier, but nothing different is really happening. At this point, I can either level up even more or I could just try again and again and see if I can either get luck or some strategy. I go back to attacking Pidgeot and hoping for a poison from Kakuna. If you don't get it, that's fine. Rattata will be able to knock it out. And in theory, Kakuna can actually knock out the Pidgeot on the next turn. Although in my case, it was paralyzed. Rattata outspeeds Alakazam. I used rare candies. So that's cool. But Pidgeot is able to attack Kakuna. And Kakuna doesn't knock it out with a poison sting, which is really annoying. Thunderbolt still doesn't one-shot Gyarados, which is not great because that means there's a turn of Gyarados Charizard. And after Charizard knocks out Kakuna, that means Gyarados gets an attack on Rattata. However, because we leveled up, I'm doing a little bit more damage with Return, and it's a two-shot. 
So by Kakuna absorbing that flamethrower, Rattata just have to absorb this next attack, and we're gonna win. After 10 minutes of attempts, finally I've made it past Rival Fievel. Probably took me like 30 battles to get one where it was successful, and this is just Rival Fievel. We've got like half the game left. I'd love to tell you Giovanni number two was a first try victory, but that would be lying to you. It wasn't. It was a second try victory. The Kangaskhan is just really powerful, and you can see Mega Punch almost one shots Rattata. Thank goodness there are two leftovers in this game, because it's with leftovers recovery that we are able to tank the Gyarados' attacks. That plus leveling up made the big difference, and of course, we got some pretty clutch luck as well. Now, Giovanni is going to be really tough when we face him for the third time, just because Kakuna can't do all that much, and they deal enough damage that Rattata just can't seem to keep up. In this battle, however, I knock out all of Giovanni's good Pokemon, making it a 2-on-1 versus a level 37 Rhyhorn, and so even if Rattata does get knocked out, we're probably going to poison... Oh, goodness. Well, I guess it knocked out Kakuna. And unfortunately, I have Lapras, which is kind of annoying. I'll try to knock out Lapras. Maybe... Yeah, okay, it looks like we're fine. Oh, come on! Well, I think you can see we are going to win there. Unfortunately, in a double battle, unlike a solo run, it isn't as easy having HM Pokemon with you because they automatically come out into battle. And if you'd rather them not get experience points, which I definitely would, you either have to deposit them or knock them out yourself. Kind of annoying and something I'm going to have to figure out if I do more of these, but I count that second try as a victory because we would have won. I just didn't want Lapras to get experience points because, I don't know, does it count? Is it a Kakuna Rattata run? So silly. But, whatever. We've made it past Giovanni. Now we have either Sabrina, we have Blaine, and that's it. Both of them are absolutely going to obliterate Kakuna, and Rattata's going to have to do a ton of work. I'm going to try battling Sabrina first. I think she's going to be not as terrible, mostly because Rattata has crazy good attack. We return and knock out Mr. Mime in one hit, and Kadabra goes for Future Sight. Poison Sting with the crit almost one-shots Kadabra. So I'm going to knock out Venomoth with Return, and hope Kakuna can knock out Kadabra. Unfortunately, the reverse happens. Kadabra knocks out Kakuna. However, Rattata is able to knock out Alkazam. Future Sight does hit, but Rattata is able to easily tank it, and thanks to us being pretty overleveled, that battle went really well, even though we're using one of the weakest Pokemon in the game, and essentially it was a 2v1. But I'll take it. Blaine won't be nearly so easy. Blaine has two Pokemon with Intimidate, Growlithe and Arcanine. And that means we're going to be at half of our attack after Arcanine comes out. And consider how we beat Sabrina. We used Rattata's really good attack stat and return to just overwhelm her underleveled Pokemon, I don't think that's going to work here. I try to use Return and Poison Sting on Ponyta, and Return still does knock it out. Poison Sting then hits Rapidash, and Growlithe goes for Fire Blast, so it's a two-on-one. I can knock out Growlithe. The problem is, now I have half attack, our canine comes out, Rattata is burned, which is actually a good thing, because it gets the Guts boost, still not enough to knock out Rapidash, and we're knocked out very quickly. So this is probably very much not going to work. I'm going to try battling a few more times, but I doubt it's going to yield any positive results. Well, I level up a little more and try a strategy. What if Rattata starts the battle poisoned, giving it the guts boost? And what if it also goes for Rain Dance, lowering the fire attacks and giving Kakuna a second chance? We have leftovers to try and overcome a little bit of the poison damage. We knock out Ponyta and Growlithe is poisoned, which is good. Because of the rain, Fire Blast isn't doing nearly as much to Rattata, and we can knock out Rapidash due to Guts. We might be able to knock out Growlithe with Kakuna, but it's going to take more turns, and unfortunately more turns is something Rattata just doesn't have left. Even with the rain, even with the poison, it's just not enough. I mean, the poison's a great strategy, and the rain's a good strategy too, 
But the problem with combining them is that it's a defensive strategy and an offensive strategy with Guts. You kind of just need to go, go, go before you faint. And with Rain Dance, you're buying yourself more turns, but we can't really use them because we lose health just so quickly. Sure, we got a little unlucky that they attacked Rattata more than Kakuna, but you can see in this second battle, they're attacking Kakuna more too, and the result is obviously going to be just about the same. Even if, well, they just did, knock out Kakuna, I have no idea how much damage I do to Arcanine, and the answer is next to nothing. Less than half. So even though Arcanine gets, from our perspective, a very clutch miss, we don't knock it out. If Growlithe were poisoned, perhaps it would have been knocked out by now, but we're going to need to level up so that at the very least, Arcanine is a two-shot, and don't forget we were poisoned here. So, yeah. I'm not surprised this is difficult, but at least we see a pathway forward. Another 20 minutes, and don't forget I played increased speed. We battle Blaine again. I'm going to try without Poison and Rain Dance just to see how that works at level 59. We get a crit and one-shot Ponyta, which is pretty good, but we don't get the Poison on Growlithe, and it hits Rattata with Fire Blast, dealing over half my health. So I set up Rain Dance, of course it gets a crit, and all that leveling up, it's so deflating, you do all that work, and within five seconds, you lose. But that's the nature of the impossible challenge. Okay, so we're going to do this differently. We're going to go for Rain Dance turn one like we used to, and this way, Kakuna survives, well, not the second Fire Blast, but it did the first. So now it's a two-on-one, and I don't really see the point, but maybe at least we'll see how much we do to Arcanine. So I knock out Ponyta, Growlithe's move misses, and I don't knock out Rapidash. That's good to know. We do have leftovers equipped. I knock out Rapidash, and now our canine comes out, so our attack is halved. Fire Blast isn't doing all that much. I knock out Growlithe. I mean, one-on-one -on -one is pretty good, but even with the rain, that did a lot. And without poison, we're doing at most about a third. So this isn't going to work. We're definitely going to need to be poisoned. And even then, it might be iffy due to health. I might have to level up a lot again. I'm just going to try one more time poison just to see if that makes a big difference. So just like in our last battle, let's set up rain dance. Let's go for poison sting and hope. Oh, we got a miss. And we got a hit on Kakuna, which is better than a hit on Rattata. So, we're going to use Return on Ponyta, and we're going to try to Poison Growlithe. We knock out Ponyta, and we Poison Growlithe. Unfortunately, Kakuna is knocked out, so it's a two-on-one, but at the very least, we don't have to worry as much about Growlithe. I knock out Rapidash, and here comes Arcanine. Growlithe goes for Takedown, which does more damage, but deals recoil damage. So that's pretty good. Blaine goes for Full Heal, so Growlithe doesn't attack. And we do have to our canine and fire blast misses if this knocks it out oh the crit may have mattered and now fire blast oh my god the rain everything worked out i can't believe how well that worked wow everything worked out the rain lasted just long enough we did just enough damage with the poison i'm actually quite proud of how that worked out i didn't think it would at this level but the poison the rain dance the level everything worked out perfectly we didn't even need crazy RNG. We just needed Kakuna to be targeted a few times. So, I mean, the RNG was pretty good. But we're going to head over to the Sevi Islands, even though you can just decline. And we're going to level up a bit more because Giovanni number three is probably going to be really, really tough. And after that, we got the rival and the Elite Four. This is going to be tough. All right. So I'm poisoned. It worked well last time. Let's see how it goes. I don't have high hopes. So we're level 61 and 60. Ooh, we outspeed Dugtrio and knock it out. That's great. One down. We poison sting Nidoqueen. That was a mistake. I didn't think we'd one-shot Dugtrio, but that's okay. So we actually one-shot Nidoqueen, which is pretty cool. And we don't poison Rhyhorn, but it's Scary Face's Kakuna, which is a very good outcome. Next, we one-shot King. That's really good. And now out comes the second Rhyhorn. Yes. In Generation 3, there is no Rhydon. And even though I have Guts, I'm going to go for Ice Beam, and it actually one-shots the level 50 Rhyhorn. 
and that means it's easily going to one-shot the level 45 Rhyhorn, meaning... Oh, it doesn't. That's weird. Whatever, we should have this, but Giovanni does use a Hyper Potion. It's not a full restore, though. And, oh, well, critical hit. So both Pokemon make it. First try victory against Giovanni. And we are ready to take on the Elite Four, almost. We have Rival Six, who's going to be very, very tough. I don't know quite how we're going to do that. And... Yeah, I don't really have any big motivational speech. Let's hope for the best! Alright, well, he has a Pidgeot and a Rhyhorn to lead off. We have Kakuna Rattata. So, do we attack Pidgeot? Do we attack Rhyhorn? Such a tough call. I use Return and knock out Pidgeot. And I use Poison Sting on the Rhyhorn. Alakazam comes out next. Rhyhorn goes for Takedown, which isn't very good. But if I can knock out Alakazam, that will be sweet. We do outspeed and knock out Alakazam. Charizard comes out next. And we actually poison it. I didn't even know Charizard would come out next. So, with us being poisoned, we do one-shot Charizard. But if Gyarados came out, it'd be tougher. Speaking of which, here is said Gyarados. And we haven't poisoned Rhyhorn, but it did miss with Takedown. I want to see how much Return will do versus Thunderbolt. I go for Return, it does a decent amount. And thankfully, Gyarados sets up Rain Dance. Rhyhorn goes for Takedown against Kakuna. And that means we're going to be able to knock out the Gyarados. I actually use Ice Beam. We get a crit, so we knock out the Rhyhorn. And the last Pokemon is Execute. Gyarados goes for Hydro Pump. And, oh, I miscalculated. It survives on 1 HP. We knock it out with Return. And Execute goes for Solar Beam. We have one shot. We miss. Oh, wait. Maybe? Maybe? Yes! Leftovers did just enough. Oh, goodness, another first try victory with a Kakuna and a Rattata. Wow. This is unbelievable. But certainly the Elite Four is not going to be this forgiving. The Elite Four consists of four tough battles, and the rival is even tougher when he becomes the champion. It's also way harder to rely on Guts Poison because... You have to either start poisoned and you can heal it, but if you just want guts for the last battle, too bad. There's no way to reliably get it. So it's either all the battles have guts or just the beginning ones, but you can't just have the last ones, which is maybe what we would want versus Lance and the Champion. We also aren't very overleveled because of the fact we have two Pokemon. So we very likely are going to have to level up. I don't have much more to say, Let's just see how Loralee goes, and we can work from there. All right, so Loralee's going to lead with Dugong and Cloyster. We have Kakuna Rattata, and we're only a few levels higher. So I go for Thunderbolt. Cloyster is bad special defense, but it doesn't knock it out. Now, it seems like they both go for Hail, which if their AI is the same as Glacia's, that might be something they have to do. Loralee heals up Cloyster. We're probably going to want to level up to one-shot Cloyster, but we'll see. So far, we're still at full HP. We have leftovers equipped to both our Pokemon. Thunderbolt isn't actually coming all that close, and Ice Beam does a ton to Kakuna. That's not great. We could knock out Cloyster. I want to see if Return would knock out Dugong. It doesn't, but Poison Sting finishes it off. That's not great, but again, it's our first battle. We need to learn. Cloyster does no dive, and it's going to use it. That's not great. We will see how much Thunderbolt does to Slowbro, it does a fair bit. Dive knocks out Kakuna, and Surf does almost the entirety of Rattata's health. This isn't surprising, and with only one Pokemon knocked out out of five, we lose our first attempt versus Laura Lee. I only battled once more to learn I had to level up, so we did. Now, we're at level 68 for Rattata and 67 for Kakuna. I also switched them around because chat was complaining that it's Kakuna Rattata, not Rattata Kakuna, but don't worry, I'll switch them back because I'm a creature of habit and this is going to drive me nuts. But what happens in the battle, we still don't one shot with Thunderbolt. And until we do, this battle is probably going to be very, very inconsistent. But we might be able to make it further than last time. I don't know. We do poison Cloyster, but Ice Beam knocks out Rattata. So. Unless we really want Kakuna to get experience points, 
This battle is an abject failure. We leveled up all this time. I just talked about this. It's so frustrating to see it fail so, so quickly. And I'm just going to level up more. I'm just going to level up more. This didn't work. 20 more minutes of leveling up. So that's the equivalent of about an hour of in-game time. Hopefully we one-shot Cloyster. We don't, but we followed up with Poison Sting. So at least it's going to be temporarily a two-on-one. And Dugon goes for Hail, which just nullifies our leftovers. Okay, now... I think we should focus on one of them, and I choose Dugong, and we get a crit. So, for the first time, we're going to see Jinx. And Ice Beam does a lot from Slowbro, because it's not Ice-type, it doesn't knock out Rattata, which is pretty good. Now, I think we should knock out Jinx. We do with Return, and Kakuna, because I knew that, nice level, can Poison Sting the Slowbro and get a Poison. Unfortunately, Slowbro uses Ice Beam, and unless Kakuna can tank a bunch of Surfs and other things, we probably lost. It can't tank a bunch of Surfs, so we did lose. Well, we've gone to a point that happens in a lot of these impossible challenges. The fastest way to level up is to just battle the Elite Four member over and over and over again and try to get the most experience points possible. These battles are most likely not going to result in wins, but we learn more and more about what the Elite Four member likes to use, and eventually we hope that the knowledge and the level ups will lead to a victory. Well, I'm at level 71 for Rattata, and a nice level for Kakuna. I've been trying to get past Loralee for over an hour and a half. So, we're going to use Return on Dugong and Poison Sting on Cloyster. Why? because Dugong is actually the bigger threat I learned. So we need to knock it out ASAP. We knock it out with our second return and Cloyster is poisoned. We try to poison Slowbro, we don't get it, but that's okay. Cloyster does like to do a bunch of setup moves, so it being poisoned is great. It also knows protect. So it being on the field kind of makes it a two on one and Slowbro isn't a particularly great Pokemon itself. We're going to knock it out this turn with a return, and then we're going to try to poison Lapras. Unfortunately, I was actually wrong about that. Loralee was in healing range. I didn't think she was, and I didn't know she would heal there, but that's okay. Because already, we're right back in the exact same situation. We knock out Slowbro, Lapras comes out, and we don't poison. Hail stops, so Cloyster is very likely going to set up Hail. No, it goes for Protect. That's okay. Lapras confuses Kakuna, and the Citrus Berry activates, which means Lapras won't heal, meaning we might have won. Kakuna hits itself in confusion, and Cloyster's underground. We now can go for Return against Jinx, and now all that's left is Cloyster. It goes for Dive on Kakuna, and it might heal here, but it's too late. Yep, Loralee does heal, but Thunderbolt almost knocks it out, and Kakuna doesn't hit itself in confusion. And for the first time ever, probably, someone has beaten Loralee with a doubles team of Kakuna Rattata. Great. Unfortunately, Loralee wasn't the trainer I was most worried about. Bruno actually was, legitimately. Bruno has two Onyx and fighting Pokemon. This is gonna go terribly. I am allowing myself to save between attempts. There is no problem with that for these challenges. We're talking about theoretical possibility here. Ooh, that's interesting. Onyx going for Earthquake will knock out Hitmonchan. I didn't anticipate that. But the issue here is going to become obvious. Rattata is weak to fighting moves, and Kakuna is weak to rock moves. And all the fighting Pokemon pretty much no rock tomb, and the fighting Pokemon no fighting moves. So, although we might be able to knock out a few Pokemon, well, we knocked out one. I don't know if we'll be able to win right now. It's not looking really good for us. Unfortunately, despite my best effort, I was unable to make any significant progress versus Bruno. And this means even though I was so happy about my win versus Loralee, it was all for naught. We're going to have to leave and we're going to have to come back. And that's the only way to do it, to gain those levels. It sucks, but it's necessary. But as I just said, do you know where the best place to get levels is now? Battling Loralee. 
and Bruno. I don't know if our strategy is consistent enough to beat Laurel every single battle, but I know we should knock out a bunch of her Pokemon. And if we do win, we make it back to Bruno, which is good, knock out as many of his Pokemon as we can. We can save, try for a win, but if it's looking bad again, all we gotta do is just do this all over again, and eventually, we should have the levels to beat Bruno. Hopefully. We're still 28 away for Rattata of getting to 100. So, I don't think we're so close from being at a point of no return, but... We're definitely closer than I'd like to be. This battle versus Bruno actually goes a lot better than the last one. We use Double Edge, which isn't a great attack, but we can knock out Hitmonchan in one hit. And that's important because Hitmonchan has powerful fighting moves. We also can use Return and possibly Two-Shot Machamp. It can miss with Cross Chop, and after the Citrus Berry and Poisoning, we will knock it out with Return, which is good because now it'll either be Hitmonlee Onyx, which it is, and Onyx missed with Iron Tail, or Onyx Onyx, and they often like to use Earthquake and knock each other out. So we knock out Hitmonlee, and we get the Onyx Onyx. We want to see Earthquake as soon as possible, because if it uses Earthquake, they're hurting themselves. We use Ice Beam and knock out Onyx on the right, and there was Earthquake, but a little too late. Now, I accidentally poisoned Rattata, which I didn't mean to do, but it didn't actually matter. Wait, maybe? Yes! It- No! Maybe! I don't know! No! I lost because of- I used the- Oh, no! Well, actually, yeah, no, I lost. So, I actually would have won there, but it's a common misclick. Unfortunately, if you hit left instead of right, sometimes you hit your own Pokemon. I've done that before. But, what this battle did prove is that Bruno is 100% beatable at this level, and that's pretty good, because that means even if Agatha isn't, we can start getting more and more attempts where we beat Loralee, we beat Bruno, gain more and more and more experience points, and we'll just keep going like this until we eventually make our way through. Hopefully. I, I hope that works. As you saw in the should've been win I got, we got some pretty good luck. I do change up my strategy in my actual win, spoiler alert, but we're gonna beat Bruno many other times. This time, what I do is knock out the Onyx right away, and that means I can knock out Hitmonlee without having to resort to Double Edge. And if I weaken Hitmonchan enough, I can use Return and not Double Edge, which is exactly what happens. So Rattata is at full HP for Onyx and Machamp, and all we need is a little bit of luck with Cross Chop, which has a 20% chance of missing. Now, I think about it, do I want to go for Double Edge? I do. I want to knock out Machamp. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work. And then Onyx finishes off Machamp for me. Uh, you could see my expression, maybe. I don't know if AJ showed it. I was quite happy about that. It kind of figures that my original meme run of Kakuna Rattata ends up getting past Bruno because Bruno acted like the meme on my channel, which is that he's just terrible at battling. Which, I mean, evidently he is. Although, let's be clear. This game was not intended to be played as a double battle mod. Huge shout out to at sign for making this mod for me. So I could finish a series that probably no one who still watches this channel actually knows about. But that is two Elite Four members down, three to go. Let's go see how terrible Agatha is going to be. Alright, so Agatha has Gengar and Golbat. Now, there's good news. Shadow Ball is a physical move, and Rattata can learn it. There's also bad news. It doesn't quite one-shot the first Gengar. It comes really, really, really close. And that means Agatha can heal. But the fact that we can learn Shadow Ball and that it's a physical attack, I'd say that's good enough luck to be happy about. So we do knock out Gengar, so it's so close to being a one-shot. And that means we will knock out Haunter with Shadow Ball. Unfortunately, I'd love it if Golbat weren't there attacking Kakuna. It needs to soak up more damage. And oh yeah, Arbok has Intimidate too. Ooh, we're badly poisoned. That is good. That makes up for the Intimidate. I think it more than makes up for the Intimidate, right? No, just makes up the... I don't know. Anyway, I don't know the exact math, but it's good. Return, though, doesn't knock out Arbok. I was greedy. And Rattata is now confused. That's a bit of a problem. We're going to try and knock out the Arbok, I think. I don't remember which one I attacked. Didn't matter. Hit myself in confusion. It's hard to tell in a double battle. It's much more chaotic. We do knock out Arbok. Okay, I was targeting Arbok. 
And that means Gengar is here. If we hit with Shadow Ball, we will knock it out. But actually, we were badly poisoned, not regular poisoned. So never mind. Okay. There were good things about that battle. There were bad things about that battle. But overall, I think we're going to be able to beat Agatha relatively soon. Even if we don't beat Agatha right now. Also, I want you to note, yes, deleting Ice Beam, what about Lance? Thankfully in this game, although it's usually annoying, you can buy as many TMs in the game corner as you'd like. And with that, we're going to have an Ice Beam in our bag if we need it against Lance. As you would expect, Agatha proved to be very, very annoying for me. And I realized that the Golbat was actually a bigger threat than the Gengar, since it didn't like to attack. And the Golbat had Confuse Ray, which I hated, because it meant I could hit myself in Confusion. All Gengar could do is use Double Team and use Shadow Punch, which is really weak and does like nothing to Kakuna. It's just not a very good Pokemon. Critical Hit definitely helped, and with Haunter, unlike with the Gengar, we are able to one-shot it, which is nice. So, kind of like we did with Cloyster, we're just going to leave Gengar out in order to just exploit the fact it's not very good. I actually used String Shot so that we're going to be able to outspeed not with Kakuna, but also with Rattata. Because if push comes to shove, I actually think Kakuna will just wall Gengar indefinitely. So that's pretty funny. It's snoozing now. I need Rattata to knock out Arbok. This only works... Oh, critical, it's bad. But this only works if I use a bunch of Hardens. And, but I, I don't know. I just think, I think it actually could work. With Leftovers, I need to knock out Arbok. I will on this turn. Now the thing that's scariest is that Gengar can use Toxic. That's the strat for this Gengar, is use Toxic and Double Team. We do hit with our first Shadow Ball, but because of Intimidate, it's not going to one-shot. So we need to hit again. We do. So no silly stall strategy ideas, which is fine. I'm happier not having to do that. And we've made it to Lance. Lance leads with Gyarados, so another trainer with Intimidate. The rival also has a Pokemon with Intimidate, another Gyarados. So it's the final three trainers all have Intimidate, which is very annoying. And yeah, this could be really, really difficult. I don't quite know how I'm going to go about doing this. This might be where the run comes to a halt, but I'm not sure. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for Thunderbolt. I don't have the Ice Beam TM. I did forget to buy it, so that's a problem. Another problem is that Thunderbolt isn't even doing, like, that much. It's maybe doing 70%, which is way less than I'd hope. It's a two-shot, and we do knock out Gyarados. And now out comes Dragonite. I'm trying to lower their speed. Dragonair goes for Outrage. Blizzard is 70 accuracy. And unfortunately, with a move that hits multiple Pokemon in a double battle, its power is reduced by half. And so... We are pretty much knocked out immediately. We did knock out one Pokemon, but that that did not go well whatsoever. And without Ice Beam for Dragonite, I don't know, guys. It's really, really tough to win this battle. And especially that our attack is two-thirds of its maximum. That's really, really tough. Again, we do need them to target Kakuna, but not knock it out, which they did a good job here. We are able to knock out Dragonair, which I guess is scary. Twister doesn't knock out Kakuna, so Kakuna is doing its job. I do go... Oh, it switches. So I go for Blizzard, and it freezes Aerodactyl. That's interesting, because if Aerodactyl is frozen, it is literally a two-on-one, although there's a one-in-four chance... Oh, crits help. There's a 1 in 4 chance it thaws on any given turn. And it is super effective, so I am going to use it. And it is going to hit both Pokemon, which is really nice. It does decent to Dragonite, and it crits on Aerodactyl. Outrage will knock out my Kakuna, and Blizzard doesn't quite knock out the Dragonite. But Outrage doesn't quite knock out the Rattata. We knock out the Dragonite. We knock out the Aerodactyl. And we, oh, we, we don't win. There's a Dragonair. Whoops, I forgot about it. And we miss with Blizzard and Outrage and we lose. 
That was the closest I got to beating Lance at this level. Keep in mind, it required a clutch freeze and a lot of 70% accurate blizzard hitting. We also got a crit. Yeah, that's what it took to get to the final Pokemon, and we still lost. I knew that the only thing to do would be to buy Ice Beam and to level up more. It was going to take a little bit of time, but it's what we had to do. Agatha proved to be pretty difficult. Knocking out her Pokemon was annoying, and unfortunately, what ended up happening was what I feared. Rattata was poisoned, and Gengar had used a whole bunch of double teams. So even though I had guts, I had to actually hit. And now I was confused, and I could miss, and there was a solid chance that it would be Kakuna against Gengar. I hoped so much this wouldn't be the case, but after the final Shadow Ball doesn't hit because I hit myself in confusion, I realize I'm going to have to go for Harden, and I'm just going to fast forward this. I'm sorry how fast this is going, but remember why I said I think I could stall out the Gengar? Well, as it turns out, that is totally true. The Gengar starts using Struggle and knocking itself out due to recoil damage because Leftovers does more than Struggle. Thankfully, in this case, Agatha had used her potions, but theoretically, this could have lasted several minutes. I'm absolutely losing my mind. I thought this would be the case, and I was so happy. But like, yeah, that was just the dumbest. And we're not that much at a higher level, because again, we're splitting all those experience points across two Pokemon. We do have Ice Beam, and that's going to help us target a single Pokemon. Thankfully, we can teach it instead of Shadow Ball, because like Ice Beam, you can rebuy more. So we can save and try this battle many, 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 many times. Did that leveling up and Ice Beam help? No, it didn't. At the end of the day, Lance's Pokemon, they don't get knocked out quick enough. And simply put, they deal way too much damage to me. Even when we get decent luck, we weren't able to knock out that many of his Pokemon. Ice Beam's not a one-shot on Dragonair, and as soon as Kakuna gets knocked out, Rattata is not far behind, because they both are able to hit with powerful moves. I did this battle like 20 different times. I tried every strategy you can think of. I tried going for every little piece of luck I could think might help. And while sometimes we would get to the second last Pokemon or the third last Pokemon, we weren't even able, even with another freeze we ended up getting, we were not able to get Lance to even get down to one Pokemon for about an hour and a half. At this point, it was because my chat said it was impossible. And I didn't like that. I knew there was a way you could beat Lance at this level, but yeah, it required some crazy luck. First thing is we needed a very specific opening set of moves from both the Gyarados and the Dragonair to ensure we had enough hit points. Dragon Rage on both Rattata and Kakuna were one of the outcomes that was acceptable. We don't want to see Safeguard because we need a freeze. Ice Beam two shots Dragonair and out comes Dragonite. We also need a lucky miss along the way and we got one from Hyper Beam. Ice Beam, we got the freeze we needed. That was part of the plan. And we poisoned Gyarados. You can see me sitting up in my seat. I was so ready to go to bed. It's like 5.30 in the morning at this point. I use Thunderbolt on Aerodactyl and Dragonite stays frozen. Can't set up badge boost glitch because it's Gen 1. I use Return on Aerodactyl because it does more damage and I get another clutch crit, meaning Gyarados gets sent back out, which is kind of bad because now we get another Intimidate, but we're going to be using special attacks like Thunderbolt, which is going to knock out the Gyarados. So we have Dragonite that's frozen and Dragonair. We use Poison Sting, Dragonair does have Shed Skin, and I realize we should knock out Dragonair. Dragonite has stayed frozen an awfully long time, 
And Dragonair, rather than going for Outrage, uses Thunder Wave on Kakuna. I mean, my facial expressions here are telling you just how relieved I am that after two and a half hours, everyone told me it was impossible and I was able to do it. I was so, so happy. And then I battled the champion. Do you guys want to know the worst part about getting a battle even more difficult than one you spent two hours on? Yes, we could level up more and I knew that. I did want to prove to chat it was possible, but once you lose, and it's looking okay, we one-shot the Alakazam, what's so bad here? Uh, we actually got, by the way, exceptional luck in this battle, as it would turn out. Feather Dance, though, is the big problem. Pidgeot likes to spam Feather Dance, and once it uses Feather Dance on Rattata, the battle is pretty much over. Rattata needs its attack. It's just not a good special attacker. And remember, remember, Charizard was absolutely destroying me earlier. It's also important to note that most of these Pokemon are not two hit KOs with Ice Beam. And that means there are more and more opportunities for them to knock me out or just deal damage to me, which is a bad thing. We even got a freeze on Pidgeot which is great, but Executor can put my Pokemon to sleep and heal its HP back. Thankfully, it's going for Egg Bomb, but like I told you at the beginning, this was exceptional luck. Again, an Egg Bomb miss. Executor faints due to poison, and out comes Rhydon. Rattata is ready to wake up. Unfortunately, he heals the Pidgeot. We use Ice Beam, and it is doing half to Rhydon, but Rock Tomb hits Kakuna. It doesn't knock it out though. So that is good. So we're gonna knock out the Rhydon and that's gonna leave just three Pokemon remaining. Unfortunately, one of those Pokemon is the strongest one, Charizard. With Feather Dance, Double Edge does like nothing. And this is the closest I would come to beating the champion for a long, long, long time. I would battle again and again and again and again. What is the issue with the champion? It's the same issue we had with Lance. There is no safe Pokemon. There is no first Gengar. There is no Onix. There is no Cloyster. There's no Pokemon we can sort of say, let's leave this one around because it won't do much. Pidgeot is that Pokemon, but then it uses Feather Dance and becomes our worst nightmare. We left around everything. Alakazam, it's kind of not bad until it does a bunch of damage. Executor, oh, it's not so bad, but it can put me to sleep and it can heal itself. Rhydon, it can deal a bunch of damage. None of them are safe Pokemon. And so after being up for God knows how long, I decided to give up at least for the time being. The next day I do attempts again, but after realizing I got incredibly lucky that first attempt and I wasn't making any progress, I make the difficult, difficult decision to leave. That means that Lance battle that took me two and a half hours was pretty much all for nothing. It got me information, but we might have to go through the same thing all over again. The Agatha fight where I stall it out, all of that seemed to be part of a narrative, a story I would tell to you guys about how I beat the game with Cocoon and Rattata. But unfortunately, while it's still part of the story, the book still has, it seems to me, several chapters yet to be written. Because I left, I needed a bunch more money in order to buy all the TMs that I would need for the Elite Four once again. And of course, I actually went to the Sevi Islands, battled some trainers I missed, and leveled up as much as I could. Not only would this help me versus Lance in the Champion, but it also could make the first three battles a lot more consistent which will help if I decide to go back to leveling up versus the Elite Four. As it turns out, that's exactly what would happen. We once again had a stall fest versus the second Gengar, not nearly as happy since I already knew it would happen, and we made it back to Lance. Last time, it took me seemingly forever to beat Lance, and I was very, very worried, even though my Rattata is now at level 80, I didn't actually know how much good luck I would need. I'd need less 
but we got an unreasonable amount of good luck that last time. Turns out, I would only need three attempts. Yes, this battle also got incredible luck, but there are a couple things that make it a little easier. I mean, with me being at a bit of a higher level, we get a little less damage dealt to us, we deal a little bit more damage, but we also get that freeze. Now, Dragonair is not a great Pokemon to freeze because it has Shed Skin. That said, I obviously will take any freeze I can get. Kakuna using Harden is pretty important because we need it to tank as many hits as it possibly can, like that Ancient Power from Aerodactyl. The more hits it can tank, the less hits Rattata has to worry about. We get a crit and knock at Aerodactyl, very lucky, as Dragonair thaws. It uses Outrage against Rattata, but deals about half damage. Now we can knock it out, which we do, and Dragonite is poisoned, which is good. If we get it to the right amount of health, we could theoretically... Uh-oh, Cocoon is gone. So we need to knock it out here and now. Oh, we do. That's what level 80 does. Now, rather than attack, it uses Thunder Wave... And instead of going for Guts, I just go for Ice Beam, and it's a two-shot. The luck there was good, but not as good. Still, is level 81 going to be enough to beat the champion? Let's find out. So, I return against Alakazam, once again leaving Pidgeot as the Pokemon. Sand Attack is good. That's what we want to see, because Kakuna, we can just go for Harden. Unfortunately, we get a Feather Dance. And that's why leaving Pidgeot around is just so bad. We knock out Rhydon, so that's two down. And here's where we see how much we do to Charizard. Unfortunately, Sand Attack, another thing we don't want to see. Thunderbolt does next to nothing. Fire Blast, one shots. It doesn't look like we're that close. What could we have done better? I don't know. Unfortunately, it would seem that this battle largely is going to come down to how much luck we can get versus Pidgeot. If Pidgeot cooperates and uses Aerial Ace or decides to attack, then it's good. If Pidgeot decides to use Feather Dance against Rattata, it's bad. Theoretically, Kakuna can use Harden and try and stall out Pidgeot the way it did Gengar. It won't be able to last forever, but maybe long enough to knock out some of the most powerful Pokemon that the champion has to offer. Unfortunately, it just seems like if I leave it around too long, it's going to use Feather Dance, and then we have no way of reliably knocking out Charizard. I can consistently knock out three Pokemon, but that seems to be about it. Even getting to the final two is difficult, let alone getting it to the final one, where at least it would be a two-on-one. I did another hour of attempts, and I never got closer than any of the battles you would see. Unfortunately, no matter what I seem to do, I never knocked out Charizard, and I could never get the rival down to his final two Pokemon. It was frustrating because giving up meant I'd have to beat Lance again, and who knows how long that would take. Once again, I came back the next day, and after one last battle that didn't yield better results, for the second time, I left the Elite Four in order to keep the levels I'd gain and gain a bit more so that the next time I battle the champion, Hopefully, the damage ranges against me would be better, and the damage ranges against them would, well, also be better. I spent another hour leveling up, finally making it back to Lance. Actually, this was the second time I made it back to Lance, but I'd forgotten Ice Beam the first time, so I had to lose and leave. This is also the first Agatha of the battle. I didn't need to wait for 10 years for Gengar to run out of power points, which is kind of nice. But unfortunately, even though I had Ice Beam, Lance still isn't easy. I battled him probably 10 times, and after I couldn't win, I realized if I can't beat Lance in 10 times, you know what? I'm probably not going to beat the champion at all. This is what leveling up against the Elite Four is all about. Not sitting there being stubborn. If you lose, and you lose a lot, just go again. Gain some more levels. Who knows what's going to happen? Yes, you eventually hit level 100, but you're using a Kakuna and a Rattata. You've earned the right to level up. It took a really long time to get another win versus Lance. Kakuna is level 85, Rattata 89. And at the end of the day, what did the win come down to? In this case, more that they were just attacking Kakuna the right times. 
and the fact Ice Beam is doing a lot more damage to Dragonite. He also got some pretty good damage ranges, but for the first time, I actually didn't need a freeze in order to win, and that felt really good. I was pretty happy. It actually had taken me about half an hour this attempt to beat Lance, and I really just wanted to get more attempts at the champion, but even though I'd beaten Lance, I knew that didn't mean the champion was free or easy or doable. Uh, let's try again. You always hope it's going to be a first try victory because that feels, well, I mean, that feels amazing. I knock out Alakazam. We've done that a million times by this point. I go for Harden. Feather Dance against Kakuna is literally the best move. I go for Ice Beam. It's not one-shotting Rhydon. Aerial Ace. Okay, so remember how I said we want to just wall Pidgeot? This is what we want. So we knock out Rhydon. Two down. No Feather Dance. Of course there is. Of course. Of course. I jinxed it. Anyway, so now I probably should knock out Pidgeot. I guess we can see how much Double Edge does to Charizard. It's almost doing half. But it's not quite doing half. And then Sand Attack. Yay. This is going to be fun. This is going to be so much fun. These levels are really helping. I don't want to leave a third time. I know some of you are saying just knock out Pidgeot first, but I'm telling you, Alakazam is actually worse. I promise. But you know what I do this time? I poison myself with Kakuna. Yes, there is another way to get guts. Just use Kakuna. Is that smart? I don't know. But we knock out Pidgeot, and we should with Double Edge knock out Executor. We don't have much health left. But we might actually... Ooh, scary face miss. We're probably going to be able to knock out Charizard. And if nothing else, that's going to feel great. We haven't done that yet. Return knocks out Charizard. And now we have Gyarados. Both these... Ah, darn. Okay, well, we didn't want to see Earthquake. But we knock out Charizard for the first time. And we did try Gut Strategy. Unfortunately, it doesn't really work when the final two Pokemon require special attacks and you're poisoned and at basically zero HP. I've been battling the champion probably for about five hours all combined, and I still wish I could knock out Pidgeot first, but I'm telling you, it really is the safest Pokemon. That's how good the champion is. Sand attack against Kakuna, that's why it's safe. It isn't actually likely to hurt Rattata, and that's what you don't want. Aerial Ace on Kakuna, perfect. So we can knock out the Rhydon, and now who's coming out next? It's always a nice mystery. Ooh, it's Charizard. And Sand Attack is bad, but it's not Feather Dance. So I can go for Return. It doesn't quite knock out Charizard, but it somehow goes for Slash, which is really odd. If we hit, we're going to knock out Charizard, and we do. So that's really good. There are three Pokemon left. Executor, another Sand Attack. That's really bad. I could try and knock out Pidgeot. I'm going to use Return on Executor. Oh, we hit again. And we poison. There's the Feather Dance I was worried about, but it actually doesn't matter that much because the final Pokemon... Oh my god. We knock out Executor. It's Gyarados. And Gyarados, we don't need our attack. We only need our special. We also just poison... Did we just win? Please hit. Please hit. Please hit. Please... Okay, that's understandable. Oh, we poison. Dragon Rage. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh, we got another opportunity. Hit, hit, hit. Come on. Please, please hit. Please hit. Oh my god. I think we just won. I think we just won. I, I actually think we just won. No, no, don't knock out. Okay, Rattata. Please hit. Please, please hit. Yes! No. Oh, no, I shouldn't have used it. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Hit, hit, hit. Please don't heal. No, it healed. All right. But can we stall it out? Can we stall it out the same way? We stalled out the Gengar. Maybe we can. Unfortunately, we're not going to hit very much. And we're running out of Poison Stings. We absolutely need to Poison Pidgeot if we're going to stall it out. Because Struggle... I don't know. Oh, this is not good. And what if it gets a crit? See if it gets a crit, we lose. Okay, it's so, so nerve-wracking. Please don't get a crit. And please just Poison Please just poison. It's like, what is it, a 30% chance? We have 10 left. Come on. Come on, Kakuna. Come on. Win for me, Kakuna. You've got this. Kakuna Rattata. What a wonderful teen. 
Kakuna Rattata, not a fever dream. It means more badges for the rest of your days. It's our struggle free philosophy. Kakuna Rattata. <laughs> it's not working. I sing the song and it's not working. I can't believe I can't get a poison. I can't believe it. I'm one. Yes, finally. All right. I think we did it. I think the song worked. Feather Dance is fine. I think it's out. I think we won. I think we won. I think we did it, chat. We did it. Well, YouTube chat. You know what I mean? We. Oh, no. Uh, We might still have won. It, we might still win. It's out of moves. It's gonna use struggle. I have all the hardens. Uh, okay, let's speed through this, but we might have won. This is gonna take a really, 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 really long time. So, oh, it's starting to use struggle. Okay, there we go. There's struggle. All right. We have the HP. It's doing five via struggle, and we heal it all back. It's going to get a critical hit. Okay, critical hit deals 40. I think we won. I think we won. I think we won. All right, let's just fast forward. Are we going to win? Come on. No, no, it heals. There's another potion. Please, now we have struggle. All right. All right. Come on. Come on, Kakuna. Come on, Kakuna. You got this, Kakuna. You got this, Kakuna. I believe in you. You're the best Kakuna of all time. Wait, it's gonna knock itself out. It's so close. No, I miss. All right, come on, hit Kakuna. You win. You win if you hit. Please, please, Kakuna. Yes, we did it. We did it. <laughs> we stalled out the Pidgeot with Kakuna. And you know what? It deserves to evolve into Beedrill. Actually, I was mashing B. It I don't know why that didn't work. It was weird. But let's just say I did that on purpose. Kakuna Rattata beats the entirety of Kanto. A run I started as a joke ended up being one of the most difficult I ever actually did. This video has been a long time. Take care.